This is the video for the work breakdown structure utilizing tax list and critical path analysis. What is a work breakdown structure? Well, it is a management tool that allows a team to divide a project into definable segments or tasks that can be easily tracked. Here we see a bicycle project that has been broken down as a function tree into subsystems and components. Also note the numbering system used for this in order to track back through the function tree and back through the project plan. You also see that of the component level or smallest task level 3, we were able to make time estimates for each task coming up with a total effort level of 100 units. The value of doing a work breakdown structure is that first of all, all the major elements of the project are accounted for and no critical tasks get left out. Also, the project is divided into manageable tasks and that the task-to-task -task relations are revealed and then hence can be tracked. Managing the time scheduling, budget procurement, quality control, and risk management plans all are beneficial with a well-established project plan. It also helps to determine the types and level of skills that will be required to complete the project. To make a WBS, the first thing we have to ask ourselves is what are our major deliverables and can these deliverables be divided into subtasks or components? And as we subdivide those down, can we get those defined into reasonably sized tasks that we can make a good time estimate for? Here we see a couple of examples of function trees on, on either project management or on the design of a mountain bike. To get started, first thing we have to look at is the project charter and the scope statement. What are our major deliverables? Is it analysis with a recommendation? Is it design? Is it a prototype of a product or process? Or testing with data analysis? We have to break down the work based on the specific deliverables that are being requested. And we need then to determine the specific functions required for release of a new product, process, or service. So we'll start with making a work breakdown system looking at the bicycle example. So we start with a major system, break that down into its subcomponents, in this case frame set, crank set, wheels, braking system, and shifting system. We're also going to take a look at the process of managing the project through integration and lastly some project management tasks that we have to do with closing out the project. So here you can see that we have the analysis and design section of the project and then the project management portion that we're tracking. Break that down into its components. From there we can give time estimates to those elements in the project. You'll see in this case that we're going to use days as our time unit of measure. So we have 100 days of effort involved with this project which then we can track back through the project up to the main level. Some guidelines for setting up the task list. First of all, each task shall be small enough that the duration can be reasonably estimated. Also, we want to break down the project to a level that is possible to track. Too coarse, things will get missed. Too fine, you'll spend way too much time just tracking the project. Also, when you do set up your task, make sure that you're assigning the responsibility of tracking that task to only one person. And then finally, that each task should be clearly measurable for output so that it can be verified as complete. Then as you're working the project, monitor the quality criteria associated with those tasks to make sure that they're getting completed sufficiently. So some guidelines here for building the project plan. Use the WBS worksheet in the demand for toolbox or with the examples that we have provided. And from there, estimate the durations for each task as you build your project function tree or task tree. Note here that your duration estimates are going to be your best guess, and that's okay. Key thing is, let's get our hand around the time required for doing the project to know uh, whether or not we have sufficient time in the calendar to get it done, or to also determine how fast we have to work through the project get that put together, we'll transfer those tasks and durations to the critical path worksheet and build a work path flow diagram to allow us to calculate early start, late start, and must end dates for each task. From there we'll calculate the float times with anything receive, receiving a zero float time result will be tagged as a critical path item. This data will then later be used to build the Gantt chart to load level our schedule 
and confirm whether or not we have enough calendar time to complete the project. So here we have the critical path uh, worksheet where we've got the function tree established. We've also listed the persons who we would like to track each of the tasks. Uh, here we have a three-person team consisting of Starnes, Heisey, and Lukey. So we put that data in there, we put the durations in, and now the next thing we want to do is to put labels for each activity or each task that's going to be done here. Uh, the lettering here has been placed in a order that we believe they will happen on the project plan and we'll from here start putting together the work path flow diagram. So in Excel you can use insert shapes and we can create circles for tracking events which are dates. We can also put in text box for tracking the task and you can set that up with uh, duration indicators in there. And then lastly use arrows to um, track the workflow through the diagram. You'll see here that uh, we have a total of 11 event dates, uh, tasks from A through N on here, and uh, several activities going in parallel for the course of the project path. Once we have the forward path flow diagram established, we can start calculating forward paths looking for early start dates in each activity. Uh, event 1 marks the zero day on the project and following the activities and flows we can then determine the early start dates for the other event balloons which represent key dates in the project. You'll see that after event 1 we have activity A which has a duration of three days so that by calculation states that event balloon 2 will have an early start date of three days. We can do similar calculations for the other event balloons such as 3, 4, and 5. You notice what, that we have circles 6, 7, and 8 highlighted here. The reason for that is, is that we have multiple tasks feeding into those events. If we follow event 3 with task E, you'll notice that the early start date for event 3 is 10 days and the duration of task E is 3. That gives us an early start date on event 6 of 13. But if we look at event 4 with task F, event 4 has an early start date of 6 and F has a duration of 13 which gives us an early start date for 6 at 19 days. Since 19 is later in the project than 13, that is the early start date we'll use for event 6. Events 7 and 8 have similar situations leading to early start dates of 25 and 30 respectively. Once we have that done, we can go to the backwards pass table, put in our event 11 with its 57 days being the total length of the project, and then look at the last task completed, which would be N, and work backwards through the project workflow diagram. N has a duration of five days, so we would track five from 57. We have a late start for event 10 of 52 days. We can use the same logic to calculate back through the other events and get all the late start dates for all of the activities in the work path flow diagram. Once we have that completed, then we can go to the total float analysis table and calculate for each activity how many days of float they have. Any of the activities that come back with a result of, of zero are our critical path tasks. From there, we can then go back to complete our task list table, which will then go into our Gantt chart. We can also go to our work path flow diagram and indicate on the arrows by changing the color what the critical path is through our project plan. You'll also note that at, down at the bottom the effort days and the calendar days are not the same. Well this is due to the fact that we have more than one person working on the project and as a result the calendar days are shorter than the effort days involved in the project. This is typical and you can expect to see similar results in your project plans. So, the advantages of building a good project plan using this method is that even if the duration estimates may not be accurate, changes to the schedule will advise the team 
as to whether or not they have more or less time to get the project completed. Also will help the team from keeping any of the members from being overloaded. It helps you identify any resource restrictions ahead of time before they occur, which also then helps the team to be proactive. You can head off problems before they become problems. It also helps the team to identify areas where the project timeline can be accelerated if needed by pulling people off non-critical tasks and doubling them up on the critical path items. Lastly, it will help the team to manage the scope growth of the project. If there is any changes that are requested, the impact of those changes or disruptions uh, can be tracked to see what sort of impact they will have on the project completion date. This scheme gives the team uh, the necessary power to negotiate whether or not a change will be allowed into the project. This concludes the video for work breakdown structure. Be sure to watch the video on Gantt charts that shows you how to take the information from here and put that into your final project plan. Thank you.